Welcome back to the League of Legends College Championship presented by State Farm for our next quarterfinal. We are loading up our next series. It's going to be Columbia College versus University of California, Irvine. I am riving to biz in the third, and I would never cheat, but I may have used Mark Zimmerman's study guide ahead of this series. I actually made these. I was going to say, I just drew doodles, so <laughs> I was surprised to hear I had a study guide. So let's meet the teams loading up. We don't talk about this. On the blue side, it's Columbia College. Let's see who they're bringing. Evan RL, I play AD Carry for Columbia College. My summoner name is Buckzack. Uh, I play support. My summoner name is Misty Stumpy, top lane, and then Columbia College. My summoner name is Robex. I play mid lane. I'm Josh Atkins, Nintendo Dex, and I play jungle for Columbia College. I'm actually really confident to go in and play UCI first and you know, if you're playing one of the biggest matches first and you're able to, you know, knock them down, it just, that confidence going into the rest of the tournament just means you can probably make it to finals. We're definitely not going to take them lightly, but I think we'll be a little more prepared this time. I hope to prove that Columbia College is the best collegiate team, which we are, and we're going to win this year. Ooh, Columbia come into the tournament as one of the favorites to take it all. The team seems to think so. But first, they have to have a rematch now with a team that did knock them out in the finals. Yep, uh, they will be returning with Misty Stumpy, Evan RL, and mm. Bucksack, a trio of guys with a lot of experience. Misty Stumpy was one of the big guys to look out for over the course of the last college championships. Uh, they've been joined by Nintendo. Uh, who is playing alongside Rovex as well, who was here last time, and that mid-jungle duo is a big upgrade. Uh, this team generally likes to win through their solo laners. Misty Stumpy plays a ton of solo carries. Uh, you know, he's playing Fiora last year. Everyone was really impressed by that. So we'll be looking for more of the same with Nintendo to kind of prop up those solo laners. It is awesome. A lot of the other teams that are really doing really well is uh, also are thinking like Misty Stumpy is going to carry that team. X is going to carry another team. So definitely a lane to watch coming into this match. Opposing them, it is the reigning college champions with the hometown crowd behind them, the University of California, Irvine. My summer name is I'm Avi. I play jungle. My in-game name is Bloodwater. My name is Youngbin. My summoner name is also Youngbin, which is my name. <laughs> uh, I go to UCI. I am uh, AD carry for, the, uh, for UCI Esports. It feels good coming back to Riot and being able to play on stage again. I'm definitely excited to be back at the Collegiate Championship and I'm ready to repeat win again. Our team's biggest strength is how well we can work together. This is the longest I've ever been on a team before. Like, usually I'm on a team and then we lose a tournament and then we disband. There's definitely kind of a target painted on our backs this year uh, as defending champions, but I don't think it's really pressuring anyone. None of us are even thinking about that at all. Like, we're just thinking that if we play our own game, then we will win no matter what. And the only other team with potentially more experience than Columbia at this tournament is their opponents, UCI, who don't just look to defend the title here, but field former LCS players, bot, uh, player bot laners, uh, or to boot. Yes. Or words. Uh, Young Bin, a lot of people will recognize the name as well as Bloodwater, uh, guys with incredible experience. They are backed up with Captain Nuke and the finals MVP, Descraton. So two guys who have experience winning on this exact stage. Uh, and they are a team that loves to play and pull wins out late game. They have so much experience, all this competitive experience coming from LCS uh, to college as well as winning last year. They are probably the best late game team. Yeah, so much experience. They have that at a, so much in the ESPN series. The eSports team, good game. The UCI's coach had this to say about the team's highs and lows. So imagine we're playing a game of football in the fourth quarter. We're the guys who can be down 21 points and manage to somehow rally it all back. But the flip side of that is we're also the team who are usually down 21 points going into the fourth quarter. In football, there's always four quarters, right? League of Legends does not work that way. We oftentimes can just lose the game before we get to that fourth quarter rally. We didn't fall behind every single game. We beat everyone no matter what. I don't care what comps they play. I don't, we could play anything we wanted. They would always lose. I mean, he said it best. They can play from behind. They can win in the fourth quarter. It's just they're, they don't always get to the fourth quarter. <laughs> they're the team that's behind, right? So if they can prevent that from happening, if they can always come out strong, they are the team that will be able to defend and keep on going. Still seems confident, though. He feels like that he, he, despite everything that happens, there's still confidence in the team, even in those troubling times. Yeah, they even said, you know, comp almost doesn't matter. It's, it's not like they're right. drafting late game and they're, they're playing late game style. It's just the players themselves are so experienced in late game shot calling. They've been in more situations probably than any other college team. 
that when they get to late game, they play it better. Not necessarily like, oh yeah, we took five, you know, Azir, Jinx, and a bunch of other stuff. Yep. So let's see what they have for each other. Has the homework been done by Columbia as they go against the defending champions in UC Irvine? Bands are out. It's going to be Morgana and Vladimir from Columbia with Pike and Akali on that bench from UC Irvine. Rise is the last from Columbia. And one more band before we get into those picks. We'll have to see when hyping Yumi up all weekend long so far. Have yet to see it. Maybe we will. <laughs> Not the case. First, they're going to grab the Jace, something that's been seeing a lot of play all over the world. Uh, Silas is still up, so they're probably looking to trade that. UC Irvine intentionally leaving up two of the quote-unquote flex a uh, OPs, so one of them will mm -hmm. fall to their hands on red side. Captain Nuke may be picking for himself on this. Also could flex that to Avi. They say this guy has a big voice on the team. He is one that keeps him up. Oh, right. there we go. Raren, and it is going to be the Yumi lock-in by UC Irvine as we see them here at the Collegiate Championship. They bring out the spice to start it off. And we will have a fun time digging into all the mechanics <laughs> of Yumi. I uh, made sure to do a little bit of research before this to be ready to talk about it. Uh, there's a couple of coaches that we've been speaking to as well over the weekend about how prevalent Yumi is in the current scrim meta for LCS. Feels like people are playing it all over the place. Warps the bot lane meta, what's strong, what's Ugh. not. Uh, and so it's a champion to keep an eye out for when the LCS season starts up next week. And you're going to get a quick peek of it here by UCI. Next to see if Youngbin as well takes different summoners, if Bloodwater, oh, like you said, so much to go into. Avi will lock in that Silas as well. Like you said, it would be that trade that Columbia would have to have happen if they did take the Jace. And Tendudax takes the Leah, probably his in the jungle, but could also flex as Rovax will have the final pick here on pick phase one. Yep, so we'll have to see what they end up going with in the bot lane. Uh, one of the big changes that came through was the Ginsu's change, which has pushed crit marksman up, and so it's no surprise to see the Sivir taken away. Uh, it's a very strong champion, something maybe the best in the current meta, uh, if you are going for more crit marksman, because like we were saying, Ginsu's ones, like the Kai'Sa and the Varus, have become a little bit weaker, i.e. Storm Razor, uh, Essence Reaver are, are kind of the stronger AD items right now. Teams as well saying Sivir are actually quite good into Yumi and whatever her lane matches are. You just keep bouncing it back towards the enemy. It's going to be a super annoying safe lane as well to go along with it. Wow. The Ezreal and the Yumi, but we'll see who actually they give Yumi to attach to otherwise. They already have the Silas. Who else can be kind of crazy, right? I mean, that's, that's the nice thing about Yumi is she works so well with multiple different champions, mm -hmm. being able to zip throughout the fight, having someone who goes in so you can get a nice ultimate off, maybe being able to pop back to the Ezreal to, to snipe from far away as well as in lane. I know a lot of people don't think Ezreal is in a great spot necessarily, uh, but it does work well with the poke that Yumi has in her Q, as well as the trading with her uh, passive. You can always hop back after getting the auto attack, giving you the shield to the Ezreal, who should be playing pretty far away. So it's, it's hard to kind of follow up. Yumi does have low range and low base Ooh. HP, so it can be difficult, but uh, that's probably what the bot lane trading pattern will look like. Oh. It's such a toxic landing phase. <laughs> just outright saying it, Riv. Let me know what you really feel. I don't like it's it means it's good, but it is just playing against it makes you want to pull your hair out. It's kinda of like playing against the Yorick, where it's just always so that annoying. Spam. You can't really do anything to get at the opponent. If you hit her with a dark binding, she just zips back. She can like Tom Kench herself. So many situations where it can really just outplay the CC in the lane to make the aggression happen for them. I like it. We'll see what they have. Youngbin's going to lock in a little more crowd control. Jarvan as well, like you said, an ultimate to go in with and an ability to hop back for the Yumi. And what is this crowd or what is this uh, team ending picks here for Columbia? One, two, Evan R. Allen, Buck Zach looking for a support and looking for a possible mid laner if that Talia goes to the jungle. Yeah, they still have a fair amount of flexibility. Um, looks like the Elise getting locked in, yep. making sure that Talia is going mid. There you go, Braum as well. Braum, Sivir lane, keep it very safe, get shields up, make sure you can get a lot of those stopped. And you don't, I'd say, give too many ultimates here to Silas. I really like the team that Columbia has put together in that sense. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you have a total of one damage. Yeah. And it's it's a Braum ult, which does not have the best ratios on it. It is a very nice ultimate for Silas to steal, but otherwise, you know, same with Sivir. It's a great ult to have for speeding you up, but it doesn't improve Silas's combos the way some things do, like a Pop Blossom that you've seen him steal where he's able to engage with his other stuff. So. Uh, you know, a pretty good team comp for Columbia to answer the Silas. The question is, do they answer the rest of UCI's team? We will have to see. I'm looking at how this would actually scale 
with the Yumi, we kind of haven't seen it go in too many games. What do you give that late game to? Would you say that UCI actually kind of has to take things early to have a good late game? No, I think UCI should have the better late game. For the most part, Jace is still an early game pick. Talia, more early game centric. Same with the Elise. So it feels like their soul laners are pretty early game focused. Uh, they're going to want to make a lot of stuff happen. Their bot lane is relatively defensive and scaling yeah. focused with the Braum and Sivir. Um, True. But you have a lot of activity on the top side of the map. They're going to want to snowball early. Uh, otherwise, I think UCI's late game, which even beyond just the picks, like we were saying, UCI approaches this game like we're the best late game team in the tournament. As long as it goes late, we're going to mm -hmm. win. It doesn't matter the picks. And you have Columbia College opting into more early game themselves. It's true for UCI. They have the veteran status there and some LCS players as well as a lot of players that have moved around the team that will go over throughout the game. Just a lot of experience there for UCI. Columbia College saying themselves, we could take down this team. We basically take down the tournament. Columbia says they are their biggest opponents here. So we'll see if that is true. We are about to get into the next quarterfinal matchup of UC Irvine versus Columbia College. Game one underway. We'll have to see if they can do anything interesting. Level one, Braum, one of the best level one uh, champions. Mm -hmm. Jace, no joke either. Talia, very strong with her Q spam. So if Columbia College wants to get aggressive in the early game, they do have... Uh, the tools to start that early game, level one. All right, and we have a quick sideline report with Avali May. Thanks, guys. I am here with UCI's head coach, Coach Man. Now, you guys are the returning champions from last year, but you are also the cockiest team at this tournament. Are you worried that's going to come back and bite you in the butt? No. Not at all? We're not cocky. It's easy to characterize somebody as cocky without inside information. We're very confident, and we have insider information, so we know that we're allowed to be. Insider information. So what makes you so confident as a team, then? Oh, we've played against a lot of our opponents, and we know that as soon as long as we play our own game and stay on track, victory is almost assured. Well, this is the first time that we've seen the Yumi pick come out, so what made you bring her out today? Well, frankly, uh, I took a lot of cajoling with my team to get her to try, get them to try it. But we kind of joked that as soon as we played it, it's like this is Bloodwater's champion. You know, he's always liked to stay in the back line, really control fights, and be able to just communicate. And he's like, he just literally hops on his teammates' backs and floats around. It's really quite perfect. So you're going to see some pretty good results this game. I guarantee it. Well, I'm excited to see it happen. Best of luck to you and your team. Back to you guys. So I, I love it because they coined it as, as Bloodwater. I remember his team saying, this guy is very, very tall and very sweet. So while the tall doesn't fit Yumi, the sweet fits Yumi. And we'll see if he does that. I remember, always remember Bloodwater for his Janna back in the LCS days, mm -hmm. stealing away Barons with level one Howling Gales. That's Bloodwater. He always is on the back line, but still making things happen with those utility supports. Yep, Enchanters do seem to be a specialty and Yumi being the latest and greatest in that line. Uh, the poke will be very frustrating to play against, but that's not the only part of the map. They obviously have to deal with yeah. the Jace in the top lane, the Talia, two champions who should be pushing in all game long and setting up Elise dive. Cleaned up towards the turret already for Captain Nuke here. Rumble versus Jace in the top lane. Mr. Stumpy always known to be an aggressive player through the uprates there with a quick shock blast as Nuke farms under the turret. So we'll keep an eye on Stumpy and Captain Nuke. Their teleports throughout the game and plays they'll be able to make. We have seen a few rumbles throughout this uh, tournament already and it's definitely a focus on those dragons at this level six. So a couple of things to point out uh, about that Yumi lane is hold on, we might be seeing some action. I can return to this in a second. That wave will be getting pushed in. Just the two skills you get out of the level one still. And Jace, you get so much damage and Captain Nuke has taken it. Three up top already. Rovex is gonna be there. Captain or Nintendo rather as well. And it looks like you're gonna get Descraton in. He's not gonna be able to do enough damage as nobody takes turret aggro. That's gonna be first blood going over to Columbia College. And they kind of just walk it in nice and calm. See if UCI can attack back. Yeah, really well done by Nintendo, not panicking, uh, knowing that they have so much damage available to them. He doesn't even need to uh, land the cocoon. So this is pretty much an all damage dive. Rovex cuts off the escape. Captain Nuke goes on their turret. W hits creep right away. Doesn't matter. There's so much there that as soon as they finish off the kill, as long as Nintendo repels out, no one else will grab the turret aggro, and Descartan wastes his TP trying to cover that. Pretty nice play, fast push by Rovax. You can see Columbia College already had something in mind. They said Misty Stumpy is going to be a bit of our focus here in the early game as Bloodwater goes aggro. Nice job getting a bit of brush control. But Columbia College with something on the docket already, putting 
kind of a, a hit in that armor of UCI. Yeah, so, I mean, this is what we were talking about. The aggressive top side of the map for Columbia College looking for dives. Their first one, very successful and very early into the game. Captain Nuke did not blow any summoners. In fact, no one did. That's how clean that dive was, other than Descartan's TP. Captain Nuke knew he was dead. The CC knew they had that kill. Uh, the question is, can this bot lane get anything done for UCI? Yep. Uh, like I was saying, a couple things about the Yumi. One, don't take Flash. That is a, a trapped summoner, which is normally a necessary for every champion in the yeah. game. Yumi, with her W, being able to... Uh, it has no external cooldown, so to say. The ability doesn't go on cooldown when you use it. It's just a champion cooldown. So if you use it on the Ezreal, you can't use it on Ezreal again for 10 seconds. Yeah. But you can pop through a team fight very quickly. Um, so that's one of the things to focus on with, with the, the Yumi pick, is just making sure that you have the right summoners. And then making sure you pop on and off in laning phase to get your auto attacks with the summoner, or excuse me, the, the passive shield yep. is very big. Make it nice for Ezreal too, means he can take TP, get back to lane nice and easy. The heals on Yumi. Bloodwater can support him that way as well. Back to lane down there, 34 to 30, actually even in CS so far. Just that discrepancy towards the top lane as we had the teleport. Descraton did a good job of cleaning up ways before TPing. So he gets back to lane without losing too much too and keeps it even in that sense. So they spot this dive coming. They're trying to get up there in time to protect Captain Nuke, but they might not get there in time. They, they can just turn on Avi if they see him first. They have to be very careful how it goes. It's going to be the 10 dude X, I believe, taking oh. a bit of the aggro there. No, it goes to Stumpy as he gets the auto attack first. And again, they walk one in. The lane is even. Descraton not pushing. And he was coming up for that attack. So they're doing a great job on the side of Columbia College, kind of being a map nuisance and pulling people out of lane to keep coming top. Second time in a row, Captain Nuke not flashing. Felt like that might have been the time to try to. Uh, they have uh, J4 there to back it up. And if you can avoid the Elise Cocoon, there's no other guaranteed hard CC setup for the Talia W pushback. And so you really kind of want to flash that Elise Cocoon to avoid the 100 to 0. Didn't happen, it gets popped. And this is exactly what Columbia College's composition wants to do. As soon as they got the first TP out of Descraton, you knew that he was no longer going to be able to match Talia Roams. Yeah. And it's going to get worse from here at 6 because the Talia ult is just so much faster to get up. Descraton can steal it, of course, and try and match the push, but he'll have to be sacking minions to do so. Just in general, you got Ooh. that passive movement speed. Blast Cone Flash, one last Q. Eh, it's just an auto attack. He's going to get it in, and it counts. There's the kill on to Avi, and that was a flash as well in that instance from both junglers. Avi doing his best to get out of there, but Nintendo showing the experience, knows all he needs is that last auto attack. Things going from bad to worse on the top side, not just picking on Captain Nuke anymore. And you said it when we started, Mark, knowing UCI is the late game team, Columbia College says, well, we'll play a little bit earlier than that and see what we can do. And they're really putting their foot down here in the start of the game. And they're talking about being the team that can come back from 21 points in the fourth quarter. <laughs> they are aiming to fall behind 21 points with this start. That's true, UCI, they're looking to hit that mark. Maybe they're just, they gotta get that activation button and they'll be coming out of nowhere. Descraton is still farming it up in mid. It's like he making himself a bit of a blue buff trade off here from Avi, so that'll be nice for him. Quiet things down. He may just stay to keep. Oh, never mind. They'll just take it. He says you can have some fruit. Yep, they want to try and keep Avi in a good yeah. spot after falling behind a little bit. Uh, he does have higher CS than the Elise, but with the. One kill and two assists. Nintendo is a lot stronger at this point in the game. It makes sense because you're definitely not going to get too much out of Captain Duke just yet. He is six, and that ult's going to hit if they can or burn if they stand on it. But the damage or the items, I should say, are not being finished for the damage just yet. Three to zero as we are eight minutes in. Just about a thousand gold lead on the side of Columbia College. That's two to zero for Rovex here in the mid lane. Hopefully, he can add that pressure to Descarton as they seem to be kind of farming pretty easy for what lead he has. Yeah, it's a okay timing right now for UCI where there's buffs on the map, things for the jugglers to be doing beyond ganking top, but yeah. they're probably going to return to that game plan pretty quickly here. Uh, Misty Stumpy has not gotten any of the kills yet, but does have a 30 CS advantage before 10 minutes, so Captain Nuke is in a lot of trouble. Looks like Rovax will get a little buff here from the blue side. Bot lane not doing too bad as I look through the CS and how everybody's doing. Obviously, tier stacking for Yunbing, so you're not going to see too much action down there. 
Bloodwater is going to be annoying with attacks, but they're not going to be zeroing out Evan RL or Buckzack anytime soon. That's why we haven't seen too much jungle action towards the bottom either. And really, the game has been dictated by Columbia towards the top side. So Misty Stumpy feeling good. He's got the assist because everybody's kind of putting it on a silver platter for him. And Rovex has just been able to pick him up. Yeah, like you were saying, the bot lane won't be much of a focus. The Yumi lane, she is a poke-oriented en enchantress support. Uh, and what's really annoying about her is with the double summoners of heal and exhaust, you can often get away with uh, avoiding all ins. It's very hard to all in a Yumi lane when they have that extra summoner advantage. Uh, and so you have a poke champion who seems to be pretty good at surviving all ins. It becomes very difficult to deal with that lane. And so more often than not, you kind of ignore it. And that's kind of what we see Columbia doing with this pokes on the top lane. Oh my word, I love it. Clear the minions, Captain Nuke, perfect job as opposed to going to the damage on the champions, gets himself saved, and Descriton has to use that TP toward the top side though, so pressure relieved on top, but that's not pressure that UCI could be using for themselves. Everything seems to be in defensive mode right now, Columbia College is running the show. Cocoon misses, it doesn't look like there's really gonna be any back and forth here. Rift Herald is coming up, so whatever big summoners are used are definitely going to pay off for that team. Yeah, surprising to see Destrochon commit the TP there after Captain Nuke has already ulted to clear the wave. With Jarvan coming up, might have been enough to survive, but now with the TP down, the ultimate down, there's going to be a very nice window for CC to look for a repeat dive on the top side. Rovex pushed in this time. Avi just behind Destrochon in mid as they get out from under the turret from Evanara and Buckzack. Still safe farming down there for the bot laners. Trying to see if there's a point in time or think of a point in time where UCI can really pull Columbia College into a bad situation. It just has to be after laning phase at this point. Seems like Captain Nuke still up here saving this turret is only going to cause him more problems in the late game. Yeah, it feels like it would have been nice if UCI could have found a window to grab a Mountain Drake, which is up right now, or mm -hmm. find a dive on the bot side. Or find a dive on the bot side. Final chapter. Coming out of Bloodwater there, they are able to get a kill there finally onto Evan RL. As we just say, it's going to be quiet on the home front down here. We get a bit of action started up. Yeah, really nice timing by UCI. Uh, Destruton did steal that Talia ult. I thought he was going to be using it to mirror the top side and try and protect Captain yeah. Nuke. Says, nuh uh, I'm going bot lane, finds that kill, and there's that Mountain Drake that we were hoping UCI to find. There's not much you can do about top lane at this point, so try and find your advantages elsewhere. It's one of those things where after a certain point, in League of Legends, it's better to find your own openings than try and cover a weakness that you can't really protect anyways. I like it. That's exactly what the coach was saying. As long as we play our game, it's actually a big thing we saw at MSI where Kong Fu Buffalo was able to cause everyone chaos in the early game. All these ganks to the top side were kind of pulling Descarton up, pulling him up. Well, Avi says, let's just go bottom if they're going to keep going top. Pays off for a kill. Avi gets himself on the board after being harassed in his jungle by Nintendo Dex quite a bit. Summoners blown left and right. And they seem to get themselves on the board. Still about 2k down. Rovex having a great lane on this uh, Talia mid. Yeah, I mean, it was a really nice answer by Columbia College. The fact that they grabbed the Rift Herald could instantly drop the top. Mm -hmm. uh, they finished off that top lane turret before turret plating dropped. So a huge chunk of gold falling into Misty Stumpy's pockets. Uh, he's more than 2,000 gold ahead of Captain Nuke right now. So it's gotten pretty bad. It's basically all in on Misty Stumpy to just split push away on this game. Teleports up. He still just gets the long walk back to lane so he can make a play across the map. He's always been somebody this team can look at as, as aggression. And you see, oh, saw how much priority they put in his lane just to start things off, even on this Jace. Let's see what he can continue to do. He's going to stay in lane too. That becomes that I want to pull my hair out situation where Captain Nuke has to go up. He almost can't do it alone. The team has to figure out where the resources are best used. And it's now just going to start pulling UCI pretty thin. Yep, and they also got that extra charge on the Rift Herald, so the, te the turret already sitting yeah. at around 50% HP. That's what they try and do. Descarton struggling to follow the Talia around, but I would say all things considered have, has done a decent job this game. The fact that the, the 2k gold deficit that UCI is at is mostly from top lane, almost entirely from Misty Stumpy. Uh, bot and mid have neutralized themselves for the most part. There's some of that harass by the Yumi Q that's so annoying.
A little love for mid lane and finally getting that action bot as they want to drop these final turrets down. We have only 20 seconds left on those plates to even be up. Doesn't look like anybody's going to pick up any more gold just on that as Dragon Love is getting, or Dragon Vision is getting a little bit of love here before the next one comes up. Still actually have quite a while. Yeah. As the first one just went down in favor of UCI. And there is a turret plating going down. I'm seeing Descartan versus Rovex here in mid lane. Descartan is kind of one of the players to watch from the coaching side of their team. Handles a disgustingly large workload. Still has the highest GPA on the team. And his work ethic, they say, is, is absolutely amazing. So one of the guys that has a really good mental and can keep it on, on par for what needs to happen in the game when they are behind. He really pushes towards that. Yeah, Descartan was the uh, fi hold on here. Might be getting engaged on. 3v1 pressure. Nice uh, denial. Yeah, but Descartan in the series versus Columbia in the finals of the Collegiate Championships last year picked up the series MVP, had an absolutely stellar performance, and will be counted on, I think, a large portion of this series to make up some of the differences that could exist elsewhere on the map. Uh, Missy Stumpy and Nintendo, two stellar players. Captain Nuke, uh, in that finals last year, also got picked on a fair amount, but was doing a good job absorbing absorbing the pressure so his team yeah. could, could win elsewhere on the map. That's what it seems to be, you know, mostly the same game plan for both teams right now. Avi able to roam through. Nice ward figured out here with the division going down. Rovex just behind the turret. Again, Captain Nuke can't hold this by himself. Like you said, it's going to be that pressure as they're pulling, pulling thin across the map. As it's just a few more shots, Stumpy should be in range. A minion wave quite far away here, so they should have to wait a little bit before they get that. Rovex will head back mid, and they're trying to figure out, well, that didn't work just yet. We have to reset. Yeah, I mean, they still got a lot of pressure down. They'll be able to grab that turret oh, yeah. in just a second. At the same time, UCI's poke will finally net them this bottom turret. Uh, Evan RL has been able to kind of contest that push recently. Uh, as we see an attempted collapse onto that top lane push. They do actually defend their turret. So not a bad defense from UCI, actually. I feel like that bot lane is death by a thousand paper cuts. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the Sivir can outpush. Ezreal Yumi, which does not have that much AOE pushing potential, but the problem is how much harass you eat while you're trying to push it. So you get a couple, there's a small window where you'll get the push advantage before they land enough poke that you have to play defensively again. And that's kind of what cost them their turrets. It's like playing against a Sona that isn't, I guess she is still paper thin, but you're going to get hit by something in lane all the time. I mean, the, the problem with, with Yumi compared to a Sona is Sona's very vulnerable, she's very weak, she yeah. doesn't have any mobility. And so you can send a level two Jarvan gank down at her, an Elise dive. You can really hard target a Sona lane, which is why she's not seen in competitive. Yumi, not the case. Not only does she have mobility with her W to potentially dodge out of something if you do send it her way, but she can also just stick to her AD carry, so you can't even intentionally hard target the immobile yep. Sona. When you pair it with an Ezreal, you basically have a flash for the Yumi. <laughs> That's very true. So much movement to that lane, and now they get to roam around. We'll see actually who Bloodwater now starts to connect with. He doesn't actually have somebody that he can fly around with. Avi could be a, a big one as he gets roams in for vision and just a little bit of protection and AD for that. But no Yi, no Hacker, no Canes to fly around on as we see a bit of damage here towards the bot side. Stopwatch goes down as Missy Stumpy and Nintendo don't want to spend that much time in the bot. They are pulling a lot of pressure here from UCI, and it doesn't look like the range will be made. Descartan's going to get close. Avi doesn't want that engaged. They say, you're in here with us, Avi. And he goes down very fast as they are happy to give another kill over to Rovax. Mid lane getting a lot of pressure now as Youngbin comes in from the side. After watch is pathing but feels confident. Hits Stumpy with a pie in the face. Mystic shot there. It's just over the shoulder of Evan RL. It looks like they've overstayed their welcome and they will not drop mid turret on the side of UCI. Duxack finally joins the fight. Real back and forth, but small ground game by Columbia College, and I think they're happy with it. Yeah, definitely the case. A 2v1 dive in the bot lane mm -hmm. suddenly explodes into a 5v3 in the enemy jungle. <laughs> uh, Columbia College able to collapse on that faster. That's kind of what their comp does. Didn't need to use the Sivir ult there, but in the future they have that uh, to move to the yeah. side lanes as well as the Talia ultimate. So they're going to have a really easy time collapsing into those situations. And UCI has to be very cautious with the fights that they pick in the side lanes. That was an example of one where they did a good job TPing out. Captain Nuke kind of baits them underneath the turret, but then even though you're in your own jungle, the enemy team brings more people faster. 
just talked about the Sivir alt, and I was kind of like synergizing the rest of the composition. It's like Sivir, Talia, Speed, Misty Stumpy's uh, bait, er, acceleration gate. Like this team has so much catch potential. If they do start getting that poke, and if they can start you off very low, it's scary. Nice pickup. Cannon Minion. Have an RL 172 to 178. Bot laners are keeping themselves nice and farmed up throughout the game, but still 4 to 1. As we're coming up onto 20 minutes here, we're about to see the Baron. And objectives even in Dragons, but Rift Herald to Columbia College has really swayed the strength of the map in their favor. Mr. Stumpy grabbing red. A lot of the resources going over to him now is he's going to be solo laning and keeping himself safe. Yeah. I'm a little disappointed that top lane became such a focal point for this game. I was ready to talk so much Yumi, but Captain <laughs> Nuke and Misty Stumpy have kind of made the game about themselves. I think that, I think everybody's going to get baited into that unless you get, like, somebody playing AD Yumi. Not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, definitely the case, though. I think uh, one of the things to point out with the Yumi kit as well is we see another Rumble ult taken down. I actually did manage to land the wall. Ooh! Sandwiched in the end, that feels bad. Has to flash over. Captain Nuke has done everything, as we said, in defense this game, but he's kind of absorbing it. His team doesn't see it as a problem. They're just like, hey, stay alive. We're trying to create pressure on the other side of the map. And it's about playing it together here. Columbia College doing a great job at making UCI have to switch up the game plan mid-game. Yep, with that survival by Captain Nuke, though, all they really got was a flash, and it almost looks like UCI is going to catch a turret in the mid lane as a result. Not going to be the case. Columbia College defends, allowing yeah. Missy Stumpy to grab that one. 500 gold in bounties to be picked up. I don't see that happening too soon as Missy Stumpy is not with that fight. We can just see how far they are over their opponents. About 4,000 gold alone. Missy Stumpy is above Captain. Yeah, that hurts a lot. You have a small gold advantage in Young Bin's favor on the Ezreal. Mid lane is, is actually closer than you might think with the CS advantage and Death Baton's favor. Right. But who can answer the Jace is the big problem. And he is doing his job as well. He's joining with the team when he needs. Missy Stumpy's pushing the sideways, creating the pressure. Full communication here from Columbia College in this best of three versus UC Irvine. They said, you know, they told themselves, uh, as I said before, we are our biggest opponents. Yeah. <laughs> we are in our own heads, then that's what's going to make us lose here. No team can beat us. And I, according to their roster, it looks it looks like it, right? Former LCS players, strong players, Evan Rell playing in a different region as well in LAN. A lot of strength there. Yeah, and I think a big thing for UCI right now is despite how south the top lane has gone. Hold on here. Nice true shot barrage. A beautiful cataclysm coming down. Final chapter just misses Robex on that third hit. The wall comes in, and Bucksack's going to be stopped up for a bit. I would help his teammate out here, but it looks like he's going to get left out to dry, unfortunately. As Rovax isn't able to pull that down, they're going to head towards that bot side of the map now and try to get a little bit of pressure. Yeah, what I was about to say was, despite how things have gone wrong in the top lane, if they can secure this second mountain drag for themselves, they'll put themselves in a really nice position to be able to force Barons later on in the game. So even if Misty Stumpy is running away in the side lane, if you can pull him to these Drake fights, they can potentially find a foot back in the game. Good thing they fell behind early. UCI looking good now. Yeah. <laughs> They're down 21 in the fourth quarter, but we have potentially entered the fourth quarter right there now. There you go. Two minutes into the game. They've activated their trap card. So we got actually a nice stopwatches coming up uh, for UCI here for more plays to be made. They know it's going to have to take that little extra bit as Columbia College feels like they have the upper hand. Well, turn it right back around on them. Javi, nice job on Scryer's Bloom to get a bit more vision, everything they can. Denying resources, taking little bits away. I like the double pink wards over here by Columbia College as well. Teamwork, let's see how this happened one more time. A true shot barrage over the team to start it off. I mean, this is uh, how a lot of their pops gonna work together. The Jarvan engage can come from super far away and Yumi is able to follow up on that very easily with her own ultimate, blocking people down. They didn't have the rumble there in time, but in the future, he should be following up with a rumble ult on top of the Yumi ult to lock people down. And you're kind of just going for that AOE wombo combo comp that you often see with the rumbles. Uh, Descraton can do whatever he wants. Hopefully they buy a lot of space for the Silas to run wild and Ezreal pokes away from the back line. That's what they went for, and, and Columbia College's composition is very squishy. I mean, you have only Braum as the only semi-tank on the entire team, so 
they will be susceptible to UCI's engages if they don't get good vision out beforehand to see where it's coming from. I'm sure Descarton is waiting as well to fight these squishies later in the game and stay alive forever. And these long engages with blood water hovering over his shoulder on that Yumi. I'm sure that'll actually be pretty disgusting with the heals that Silas gets from his abilities and then Bloodwater's heals on Yumi. Could make it pretty detrimental. 24 minutes on the clock. Push to the top side, will break the last outer turret of the game. And now we are down to the second tier. There's a lot of damage still done on that top side. It seems like Columbia College has had to refocus on where things are going. Missy Stumpy has now bent towards the bottom with this Baron up, and we'll probably see those teleports coming back from the top laners from by. But until then, that top turret seems safe. Part of the case is we see UCI focusing a lot more around the uh, Baron right now. It's maybe still a little nice early. Deal. Yeah, that was very close for Young, but actually they're going to commit to this. Ooh, Robax on the left side actually gets himself stuck by his own wall. They're not going to be able to make that work. Out uh -oh. they go. Stumpy's getting into a fight. He's actually in shot form. He wants to get in the hammer form. Knock this away. There it is, beautiful job. He gets not stopped by final chapter and he gets himself to safety. So they pull the ultimate there out of blood water and both summoners as well. Yeah, I mean, all things considered for Misty Stumpy, that's a trade up. You get multiple ultimates out. Mm -hmm. You were able to get the double summoners out of the Yumi. Uh, got a little hairy there, Misty Stumpy. Definitely could have died, but well played to get all those summoners and get out. For a moment, I thought he was kind of just like, I'm going to take this face to face. Well, let's fight. And I was like, oh, OK, he's moving. <laughs> there he goes. 0 3 He's still pretty strong with that Yum was in the Black Cleaver, but not that strong. Just, yeah, still controlling whatever lane he's in, and UC Irvine has to respect it. Descraton clearing top now. He's done pretty well for himself this game, but has been pulled around left and right early game and was not able to find the kills that he was looking for on Silas as Rovex was able to find them on the ganks. Safety in warding here as UC Irvine knows Columbia College is setting up a trap somewhere. Yeah, well done by Youngbin. Sniff, something was up. Gets the trinket out. That's all he needs. Doesn't want to walk any closer as Nintendo Dex's release cocoon came up just short. Now, the gold lead has been collapsing. It's down to about 1,500 UCI's Mountain Drake. So, as this game goes later and later, it's feeling like UCI has mostly stabilized the game. The fact that the gold lead has not increased at all in the last 5 to 10 minutes. The um, bot. We're seeing a little bit of action towards Baron's side now. Keeping an eye on the ADs as well. Evan RL and Youngbin, where their positioning is. And then we'll watch the divers end this fight. Looks like they're just going to back off for the time being. Youngbin on the front of the wave. Youngbin saying the competition makes him feel basically alive. This is the reason he plays. He loves League of Legends. His goal is to get back to pro play again. And definitely a name to be remembered here. Let's see if he can make the play happen. Youngbin gets the safety, but that's going to be Misty Stumpy on the other side. Nice job as Avi keeps him in the Cataclysm, but again, it is a Cataclysm that uh -oh. only keeps the team from getting away. And now Descraton's going to be the one going down. He steals the Glacier Fisher, but it's not going to be enough. Even Captain Nuke can't fire back as the Equalizer is just not doing enough damage. And Columbia College is slowly picking apart UC Irvine. Cast your curse, right? As I said, UCI looks like they stabilized. They get caught in the mid lane. They had so much confidence in the Ezreal that he was going to be safe that he did not expect that engage to actually work. Oh. And now with the Rumble all down, they really don't have the tools to contest this. Maybe if they were all pinned up in the pit, if Captain Nuke had saved his Rumble ult, instead of trying to combo it on the stolen Brahma. Hold yeah. on, Nintendo! <laughs> Nintendo died to the Baron! That's one way to make it happen. A little unnecessary. Let's see the fight one more time here in mid. So Youngbin being very aggressive. Walks yeah, he, straight up to the Braum. Feels like there's no way they can get on top of him. Has his flash available and his arcane shift. The enemy team's engage is not that great, but that's why Sivir's speed up is so powerful, as well as Nintendo working through this line of pinks they have on the side with the Talia. Cuts off the main escape, so they're able to get in range, as well as the fact that Misty Stumpy had that kind of cordoned off. Surprised to see Avi not turning around, a little slow reacting to potentially being able to give uh, Yumi a way out of there. And then here, Descarton just not letting uh, his teammates drop, step too far forward. He dies as well. And there's that Captain Nuke ultimate used on top of the Brahmal instead of maybe dropping it in the pit. It's hard to say if that would have changed the situation, but either way, 
Columbia College walk away with a Baron buff. Now they have bottom side of the map under control. Top is slightly pushing. It looks like it might make it as it starts to push away from the turret, though. Seven to two. Just not enough kills to fill the coffers of UCI right now, and they do not have the items to fight back. Stumpy could get pinched here in mid lane. Destricon coming from the back. Hex Tech Protobal goes out, and Stumpy's gonna take some damage, but can he trade? Actually gets one for himself, maybe able to keep himself alive here with the HP coming back. And a beautiful job. Stumpy again says, you are always in here with me. You better watch out what fight you're calling. And the 2v1 goes in his favor. The team now has control of mid. After wanting bot, again, the game plan changes just to the way that Stumpy sways the game. And now they're onto inhibitors in the mid lane. 30 minutes on the clock. And they have broken the base of UC Irvine. Huge play by Misty Stumpy, taking that 1v2 and finishing off the Ezreal. But then the rest of the team coming in for backup, making sure Descraton could not get the trade kill. The fact that everyone else on Columbia College have the inside track to get there means it just stops a one for uh, zero on Columbia's side. Uh, like you said, grabs the inhibitor afterwards. It feels like this game has gotten away from UCI. This is that guy that just gets an S plus in every one of your games, and he is doing it again. It's like oh, you boy. look up, he's taking another turret. Look up, he's clearing that wave you were going to clear. Misty Stumpy has been everywhere this game. And the team, opposing team, I should say, is trying to stop him from doing that. Here it is one more time. Quite a bit of damage to start off. And he goes instantly for Youngbin, knowing he's going to die faster, knowing it would give him the HP to get back into the fight. Yeah, and the trouble here is there's no ult to steal. Descriton didn't come into one with an ult. Steals the Jace eventually, but it's not going to give him that much extra damage. Uh, and eventually here, after finishing off the kill, Nintendude X, Buckzack, and Robex come flying in to make sure that Misty Stumpy is fine and will survive Descraton. So super well done by yeah. Misty Stumpy. I also question Yanbin going into melee range of Jace. Just saying. That's always a bit of a question. Uh, felt like they had enough damage to probably burst through his shield and just weren't quite ready for how much yeah. sustain he has. You need to realize this is a four item Jace when most other people have just two items. See the gold difference is 5,600 right now. Just about 6,000 gold difference overall on the map. So it is his. And it is his alone. Here taking top turret by himself up to 61-41. And he is going to wreak havoc on that top lane all alone. Pulling probably Descraton, I'm Avi, and Captain Nuke here towards the top side. Looks like Descraton will stay towards mid. It is just all textbook on the outside of the base right now for Columbia College. They have to be careful as they take a pretty big true shot barrage, but a nice redemption comes in. Gets a four-man cataclysm, but I don't know how much he wanted that one. The fight is going to come back. Final chapter not hitting as many members as I think Bloodwater thought it would. And we'll have to see the teleport coming in now for Misty Stumpy to clean up this fight. He's now into Descraton. There's one kill for himself. Captain Nuke tried to find, uh, going towards the fountain. Going to be a few hits onto him. Stumpy may be a little too far forward, but the team is there to fire more from Rovex as they throw another rock into the mix. And now he is on to Bloodwater and the rest of the team. They have once again opened up another side of the base. Columbia College is here to stay Look for, for a Irvine. second, like UCI might have found an okay yeah. fight, but as soon as the teleport completed for Misty Stumpy, he crushed it. Now all three inhibitors are down, probably a little too low, both him and Nintendo Dex. Blink and red, uh, so they'll have to back off, but at this point, triple inhibitors down is basically game over. Look at the 4-0-5 club here for Misty Stumpy and Robex. We'll see it one more time as they dive in. Get backed up, and the teleport across the base for Misty Stumpy cleans it up one more time. Yeah, Misty Stumpy, the level 17 Jace coming in. Next closest on UCI side, level 15. And so, like you said, lost final chapter, not able to find quite as much of a setup as they want. An okay rumble ult, but then doesn't matter. Misty Stumpy's here, and he absolutely blows people up. He's so tanky with his GA and uh, Maw that no one can really contest him. Yeah, Almost there. gets an ace. Just barely Bloodwater and Youngbin get out. It's probably the only reason the game's not over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they could finish. They come back for a few more autos. Still got to respect Youngbin in that situation. Final chapter comes out one more time. Pretty low cooldown, but it's still just not enough. They're trying to deter Columbia College. They have no initiation rights right now on the Rift. Three of those dragons in favor of UCI, but they haven't been able to find the structures after getting the objectives to do so. Uh-oh. Nice Weaver's Wall goes in. Got to be careful. Buckzack's going to be the first to go down. He is now on the outside. And Nintendo Dex and Mrs. Stumpy go in, and they're going to be able to hold the fight down. The kill coming in from Evan RL as they look to clean up the first game of this series with a bit of shock and awe. 15 to 5 for Columbia College as they take game one over UCI. 
laying down the law in the early game. Yeah. That's what they said they wanted to focus on, their lane focus and solo lane focus team. And those are exactly the people who stuck up the most, as well as Nintendo snowballing that top lane to create an unstoppable Misty Stumpy. Uh, you know what it reminded me of uh, a long time ago when we used to have lane swaps and you would see teams just kind of stand there for a second until the wave came up and they were ready for the gank. It's that you know it's going to happen. But damn, it's going to have to happen anyways. Just the way the team's setting it up, how fast they get there. And it was always one little step behind by UC Irvine to get that TP or not be there in time. Yeah, I mean, UCI, for the most part, had the right reactions. It was just right, the TP right. was a little slow. Maybe they didn't need to TP one time. And, and suddenly the slow bleed out that you were hoping to have versus the Jace is a very quick bleed out. And I, I just love the whole draft plan against this Yumi bot lane where they say, we don't care, we're going to go topside completely and focus that down yeah. and try and end this game early. Yeah, it seemed like the Yumi became a non-factor. You you pick it into the game hoping to kind of put that mentality into the opponent. This has to be focused. You're right. Columbia College did their own game and a big focus to Misty Stumpy on this one. Seeing a bit of that life from Avi come through here and there, the engages were good, but at that point there was no follow-up. All the times that uh, Irvine kind of needed to get back in, those windows were there, but just not enough resources in the team yet to do so. We'll see how they come back for game two. We're going to throw it over to the State Farm Analyst Desk now to break down that Columbia win. <laughs> Thank you very much, Riv. And now UCI on the ropes here after the quick, and not, not quick, but decisive victory here by Columbia College. And they did it with a very specific plan in mind, didn't they? Yeah, I thought UCI were the favorites. What's going on? They picked Yumi, <laughs> one of the most busted champions right now, and they can't get it off the ground. Yeah, they have the Yumi, uh, should get that priority in the bot lane with the Yumi, but they picked the Ezreal, which isn't really going to push the Sivir out. And they kind of use the Yumi incorrectly, too, where she's never really attached to Ezreal and throwing those cues that, you know, you mouse over someone and it's basically a guaranteed hit. Yeah. Uh, so we don't get that on the bot lane. And then for the top lane, uh, the top side of things, this Jace just gets to run over the Rumble because he has the Elise with him, he has the Talia able to push out the lanes uh, and come kind of group on the top side and then be able to get those advantages. Yeah, it's a brutal matchup. I mean, this is the first dive where Nintendo doesn't even have to go for the cocoon because Talia gets a free roam and it gets answered by Silas as well. So he's not able to even punish anything in the lane. And once again, they find the rumble and get Misty Stumpy ahead, who we saw later into the match that just completely ran away with it. The second the stun connects, he's done for. Yeah, and he, they just get to do this over and over again, right? Jace gets to build the wave, that wave crashes into the tower, and then somehow this Silas is unable to push out the Talia. The Talia is able to get to the top side as well, and they just have too much damage for the Rumble to be able to survive. And there was another occasion too uh, that they, we didn't pull up at like nine minutes, 30 seconds, where they use the Silas teleport to try and stop the dive, and then that ends up not working either, and then the Jace is just way too far ahead. And you see in those later fights too that the Jace is just uh, rolling over everyone else. So. The thing, I mean, when you see Jace and Elise be drafted in the top, you know exactly what's happening. Yep. Exactly. That's, there's only one reason you draft these two champions, snowball the lane. It's nothing else. And when you have Rumble Jarvan, it's about hitting level six, getting that team fight where you put the Jarvan, Cataclysm, Equalizer on top of it, but mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to contest Elise, Jace at any point in the game. So I felt like they did not give enough credit to Columbia for what Jace and Elise can bring to the table early on. Yeah, that's right. Captain Nuke deserves a Purple Heart after that one. Just so much, so much pressure absorbed consistently, and the game stalled out, but that just bodes well Post for Jace. Postmortem Purple Heart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Let's take a look at how things panned out, though, after a little bit of a stall in the mid lane. Big team fight breaks out, Columbia College taking it and then turning it into a Baron. Yeah, Ezreal gets a little overexcited because he has a Yumi behind him, but Braum very boldly goes on him, and the second that that Q connects, the rest of the team can continue to take. You've got a Sivir. It doesn't matter if you're Ezreal. You're going to get mowed down. There's a Jace to speed things up as well. So it was just UCI being confident, overconfident, and I think that not only did they not have a good grasp as to what Yumi can really bring to the table, but kind of disrespecting Colombia, but I'm not thinking that they're going to do the same thing again. They're probably right there saying, you know what, let's go back to the things we know work. We know Bloodwater is a great Thresh. I want to see him do Thresh. I, I was going to say too, even if they do go for the same game plan, I want to see them actually counter the strategy. At least the Jarvan should be up there on the timings where uh, 
where they're able to dive the rumble so that he can defend or at least create a numbers, even number situation yeah. to kind of pull them off of that dive over. On the flip side, Columbia College, though, looking highly impressive in control of the game consistently, and it never really felt like they were out of sorts in these fights. It felt like uh, they knew how to win. We talked about their experience over and over again. Uh, Evan RL being on multiple college programs as well as playing in Latin America North, uh, former LCS member, Nintendo. Uh, these guys just have what it takes. Even though this is a 2-7 matchup, it's very, very much a trap game here for Irvine, and they've got to find a way to get it done, don't they? Well, they absolutely do. I mean, this is a pure throwback to LCS <laughs> Season one with yeah. Nintendo up against Bloodwater. Crumb Crumbs is rearing to get like, there too. I'm trying to find his old people in the mouth. Can you have like the hand like warmer too? I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll see how game two shakes out when we return for Columbia versus UC Irvine. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the college championships. <laughs> job as Avi keeps him in the Cataclysm, but again, it is a Cataclysm that uh -oh. only keeps the team from getting away. And now Descartan's gonna be the one going down. He steals the Glacier Fisher, but it's not gonna be enough. It's a four-man Cataclysm, but I don't know how much he wanted that one. The fight is gonna come back. Final chapter, not hitting as many members as I think Bloodwater thought it would. They're gonna be able to hold the fight down. The kill coming in from Evan RL as they look to clean up the first game of this series with a bit of shock and awe.